Hey everybody, welcome back to this series where I go through products, RPG products that I have and flip through them and review them and give you guys a sense of what they're like. In this one, uh, I'm going to be going through Ultra Ultraviolet Grasslands, um, second edition. So this just came out a little while ago. The first edition's been out for a bit, but the second edition book is gorgeous. Um, it, it's a very particular style. It's not going to be to everyone's tastes. I mentioned it before in a previous video that it's very strange. It's got this, you know, what do you call it? A psychedelic acid punk vibe. I like it, but it's not the sort of thing that I like all the time. But just reading through it, this book is, is there's more creativity per page, more crazy ideas, more ways to just kickstart your own creativity, I think, in this book than in almost any other RPG product I've ever read. And if you don't run it, it's still worth it for the art, and it's still worth it for just, like, getting out of a rut creatively. You're like, I have no idea what to do, so I'm going to open up this book, and I'm going to read about, um, you know, cat overlords who mind control humans to do their bidding in a city, or uh, a bunch of people, or a, a race of people who are um, multi-bodied, right? So it's one consciousness spread up through a bunch of bodies, and uh, they rule the cities. So there are only a handful of them, but there's tons of bodies all over the place. People walking around, but it's the same consciousness, sort of like the Borg. Uh, just really, really fascinating, creepy, crazy, weird, cool ideas. Um, and uh, and the art, again, as I said, is just incredible. Uh, the book is by Luca Reitz, I think is how you say his name. Um, Ultraviolet Grasslands. And it's a thick book, as you can see. This thing is solid, heavy. Um, it is, let me just look through here. Um, including all the appendices, it's about 240, 250 pages. Um, so this is a solid book. You get a lot of information. You get an entire system, uh, a, a world, a setting, an adventure, really, although it's kind of a strange adventure. It's sort of like Oregon Trail or something, where you have um, a map of this very long journey, this very long supply line, or basically a, a pilgrimage, sort of, out uh traveling west, 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 keep going, and the more, the further you go, the weirder things get. Um, well, I'll, I'll flip through and show you what I mean. So, first of all, it comes with, a, uh, or I got it with a couple extra things here. So, these are the maps. Um, you can uh, print them out, and you can get the sense of kind of what the map looks like. So, you have, um, this is the, uh, the Decapolis, right, the ten cities built around this uh, Circle C, which is the, kind of the last bastion, or the, the, the very edge, I should say, of civilization. And then as you progress, you oops, <laughs> you move, you start up here and you go down and you pick your path and you start to follow these little path lines to the different locations and there's random encounters that can happen to you on the way. It tells you how long it takes to travel from place to place. And as you go, right, you get these different um, diverging possibilities and paths and you can backtrack and all this stuff. And uh, each location is, is fleshed out and weird. Each location is just bizarre, and it's going to give you um, a lot of, I don't know, a, a lot of really cool inspiration. And again, even if, if you ran it as written, it would be super cool, but I think you could um, certainly just read it and almost read it as like a, I don't know, fiction on the side. It's so good. And then uh, ultimately the destination is the Black City. So this is the second map, which you would, you know, you'd put them together and eventually um, this one would lead to this one, and then you'd follow all these locations down until you get to the Black City. And the Black City has these portals to other worlds, and there's just like, yeah, crazy stuff happening there. Okay, so this is the map, um, and uh, sort of cover information. Then this is the, uh, this is the screen. Um, cool little piece of art came with the, the screen there, but this is uh, the art for this book. You can see what it kind of looks like. It's very, very vivid. Again, I think the, the acid <laughs> uh, punk, you can see there's that very, very faint UVG, ultraviolet grasslands up there. And the colors of it are just really cool. But again, look at the details there. I mean, it's so evocative. Now this is the screen, obviously. So um, it folds out. You get this big image. Here's the third panel of it. Really, really cool. It reminds me of like, sort of like a dream, right? Like one of those really, really vivid dreams you can have sometimes 
and it stays with you for years. That's what the art in this book is like. Kind of, it reminds me of like a very vivid dream that you just. You, there's weird details and things, and this is all the information inside the screen. Right? All the information is pretty densely packed with information and procedures and NPCs and things that you would need to run the system. But honestly, you could just put this up as a piece of art <laughs> and put this like if you have a gaming area, just put this up and uh, and uh, it'll be kind of a piece of art on the wall or in the background or something. It's a beautiful, beautiful screen. Um, but again, all the art in the book is like that. Uh, even this cover art is very weird um, and bizarre. But anyway, uh, the inside of the book has the procedures for travel. You have traveling uh, in the wilderness at a destination and how you proceed. There's a flow chart here. So you follow, you start here, you go down the list of uh, activities, and then when you go, you see if there's something to do, and you see if there's anything else that's happening, and you just follow this whole procedure. Um, again, it's a, it's a whole game system, so there's rules in the back for how to play it. It's a, very, it's a very simple system, so you could play your system of choice and just add, hack things in. You could even, I think, even run something like 5e for this, although it would be a lot harder to do something like 5e for this. Uh, but you could. It would take a lot more work. But a, a simple, um, you know, old school gaming system, Shadow Dark or OSE or Nave or um, really just any of the uh, kind of old school games would work just fine aside from the system that it's built for if you don't really want to run this particular system. But this is just the front cover. Or the, the edge pieces. Here is the uh, emblem of the ultraviolet grasslands in the Black City. Really cool piece of art there. And once again, I mean, this whole book, every single page of this book has just incredible art. It reminds me of a little bit. Luca Reitz does this in a lot of his adventures, I think. It reminds me of, like, Tintin. <laughs> like Hirsch, is it Herge? Hirsch? I think that's how you say his name. Um, there's a certain element to it which is, has that vibe. I don't know why. I like Tintin a lot, and it, it just brings that to mind. Comic book style, very vivid. Like, if you've ever read Calvin and Hobbes, when Calvin's in his Spaceman spiff, Imagination. Bill Watterson does those very vivid alien landscapes. Uh, that's sort of what you get for the Sunday comics. Uh, it's a little bit like that. Um, so the setting is bizarre. It's like really, really, really high into the future. Like, I mean, future is not even the right way to put it. It's it's barely in the uh, <laughs> it's barely in the world that we know. I mean, really, not even at all. There are humans, but human is sort of just like a generic term. There are things like halflings and elves and dwarves, but they are uh, variations of human, and there are rules for how to play them. But then there are specific kinds of creatures in this game that are uh, all uh, pretty unique. You can play a lot of them. There are pug people. There's a were pug early on, like a dog. You know, like the pug. <laughs> um, it's, just, it's just bizarre. Almost anything you can think of, you can make a character of and it will fit in this setting. Uh, very bizarre. Uh, a lot of, you know, shifting things around. You want to play a different character. You want to change any aspect of your character as you're playing. You absolutely can. I mean, any aspect of their physical appearance or what their race is or anything like that. You can just shift it over and explain it in-game. And there are ways of doing so. Um, here are the cats that rule the Violet City, um, which is where you start. Uh, all of the uh, areas are divided by colors. There's the Greenlanders and the Yellowlanders and the Bluelanders, and there's the Violet City, and it's all very, you know, again, ultraviolet grasslands. Color is a very important part of the setting, at least in its tone. Now, every location has uh, important places there. Every every destination, I should say, has important locations that are there. It has NPCs, it has rumors, it has um, ways of spending time in places. And also, there are, like, it's really cool, there are restaurants or locations uh, that you can visit in, say, like the Violet City. And it says, what happens if you become a regular there? And, and if you go there enough times, you can get a little benefit. Uh, maybe you start to get um, certain powers or, or, or a slight power that associates or you get a bonus to something or you get a, a bonus and a drawback. Uh, really, really cool uh, locations throughout the whole thing. Civilized debauchery in shades of purple. And there's, you know, different kinds of drugs and different kinds of uh, hallucinogenic effects and different kinds of food that you can eat. And, uh, and all of that's going on in the background. You can get experience points for eating, get experience points for tasting and trying new delicacies. But also, uh, you get experience points for, you know, doing the standard thing of fighting creatures and exploring new locations and 
um, completing quests and stuff like that. And, and again, the procedure is that you're traveling west. And there are various reasons why one might travel to the Black City. Those portals are a good reason why someone might travel. I like these, um, these travel posters. Travel to the Lavender Cliffs. Um, you get cool art of all kinds, but um, primarily the art is uh, just the highlight of this book. You, no matter what style it is, the Porcelain Citadel, this is where the, the many-bodied, I forget what they call them, polybodied people are. Polybodied, I think. Yeah, the Porcelain Princes. They all wear these masks so that they can't differentiate uh, the individual members of the one consciousness. They all wear similar masks so that you're, you know you're interacting with the same consciousness. Um, what do they look like underneath? Well, they look like people, sort of, but are they? <laughs> and there's like a caste system here. The polybodied are favored, whereas the monobodied are seen as outsiders or lower classes. The potsherd crater, where there's ruins and things. There are these um, mechanical beasts that wander around. They're like viruses, sort of, but they like turn organic matter into... Uh, you know, cybernetic uh, digital things. I think they're sort of like machines that take organic matter and make them into more machines. And so they, you can run around and run into them and fight them. And it's just one of the creatures out there in the world. Uh, the glass house of a dead prince. Um, this huge creature. Um, Vomish dreams. The Vomish are Vom. They call them vomes, I think, are the, uh, are the creatures that uh, have this biomechanical plague. Um, vome nests. Yeah, the vomes. Here's an image of one, the foam hive, uh, and what they do and how they work. So the world is like, you know, maybe our world, maybe a generic fantasy world like 80, 150,000 years ago or something like 5 million years ago. It's, it's, it's unclear. It's just vast gulfs of time between this and anything recognizable. Uh, and so there's so many different, uh, there's so much time. The author, Luca Rayet, says, you know, basically that like, look, anything could have happened in that history. You're free to develop whatever you want and put it in. Um, and anything can fit the setting. And that, that can make, make some people kind of turn them off because it's like, well, it's just too big. Um, there's just it's no cons consistency, no coherency. But that's sort of the idea is it's like, as I said, it's like a nightmare. It's like a dream where things blend together and it's unclear what's what. That's the tone. That's the vibe it's going for. And so um, and, and some people really like that. So this book is, is uh, it's one of those things where either it's going to hit you and you're going to go, that's awesome. I want to play it. Something's about a 40K. Um, or you're like, no, no thanks. I don't think I would ever run this because it is too weird for my general at-the-table tastes. But the ideas that this book has, and again, the art, I just look through it. And I'll just spend time staring at one particular piece of art. <laughs> um, cool little ghosts here. Um, really... Excellent. Um, and as you go, as I said, as you go further west or south, I forget. I think it's, it's west. You're going west. But as you go further west, the um, things get weirder and weirder, more and more desolate. Like, it's not to say it doesn't start weird. Like in the first city, there's a were pug, and there are cats that control their owners, and uh, but deny that they do. And there are, you know, <laughs> it's, it's weird. Don't get me wrong. The second city you come to is the porcelain citadel where all those polybody people are. But as you go further and further west, it gets more and more bizarre. So that tells you something. Look at that. I love that landscape. The landscapes in this book are incredible. And what I like about them is that you'll stare at them for a minute and you'll go, that's really cool. And then you'll look and you'll notice something you didn't notice before. Uh, something is like a creature that you didn't think of or the perspective is different than you expected or um, the size is way off and you realize you thought you were looking at something very small and it's actually huge or vice versa. Look at this creature. So this is a definite, this is a famous, or uh, not famous, but I would say the behemoth shell. That's something that he, um, 
I think you can find that online in various promotional materials for this book. There's the close moon, or the near moon, I think it's called. So there's like a, in the, in the sky, there's this moon, which is right there, and you can get to it easily. Not easily, but from several locations. Yeah, the moon, uh, moon facing forward. There's this moon that hovers like right over the earth, and you can go inside it and go up to it and uh, just walk on the surface and then go inside and it's hollow. Yeah, the near moon. You can go inside the near moon. Um, enter the moon, cold crust. Across the flesh, the warm mantle. You go down into the crystal heart, crystal core of the moon. So there are locations you can go to um, and you find out secrets about it. And look at this. I love this. This is a sort of a side view of a, I guess you might say, a city, pyramid city or something like that. It's massive. There's a creepy creature down here. The glass bridge. Again, it's, it's hard to review this except to say what I've already said, that it's bizarre and gorgeous and nightmarish all at the same time. And if that's not your vibe, then that's totally fine because it's a weird vibe. <laughs> I don't think, I, as I said, I'd ever run a game in this world um, straight up out of the book. But almost, I don't know if that's even the point. I mean, I, I think a lot of people will. They'll run this straight out of the book. But part of it is just that inspiration. Part of it is just looking at it and saying, this is so weird and other, and it challenges the way that you think about RPGs and challenges the way you think about your world. Like most of us run fairly standard at some level D&D worlds, right? Fantasy worlds that are, that have expectations, you know, like genre expectations and player expectations and player um, cultural knowledge. Right, like if I in this day and age, if I say to brand new D and D players, okay, so my world has dwarves, they kind of know what I'm talking about, right? They've seen the Lord of the Rings, um, or if I say dragons, right? Everyone knows what a dragon is, pretty much. But in this game, it, like there isn't that expectation. Players who start this are going to be at a loss. It's going to be like they're waking up in Wonderland or they're waking up in coming to maybe in a very strange dream and they don't know the rules necessarily um, of the world but if they think about it long enough they realize they can start playing with the world with the way that you can play with a dream and it's just a vivid dream or a waking dream or something like that yeah so some people might be put off by this this sort of vibe as I've said a couple times now forest of meat. Everything here is organic and like fleshy. All the creatures and all the locations there. The Black City. Gorgeous. Um, but I think it is worth even if you just get the PDF or something. <laughs> just so you can look at this art from time to time here. The portals hang in the air over the black city and what's beyond them there's the pre-city and then there's the city itself and what's here and then at the very end the house on the edge of time the very last thing is you go to a tavern right at the end of the campaign built just past the city there's this house where basically everything is um, you go inside it and there's just like these ancient heroes and villains are just chilling, having a drink, playing pool. Um, so it's, it's sort of outside of time. So that's the basic setting. So this is all, that first 163 pages is just setting. Locations, descriptions, encounters, um, rumors, NPCs. Uh, just, yeah, all of that, 163 pages of that. And then you have the caravan, which is the rules for running your um, your caravan. 
running your, your inventory, how you um, keep things simple to try to simplify some rules like sacks. Instead of tracking all of the rations you need and money you need, you have sacks, which basically counts as like a lot of that stuff. Um, what happens if things go wrong, uh, random encounters on the road and things, ways for them to <laughs> get worse and worse or better and better and your solutions to those things. The different trade and good you can get and uh, random things, right? What the trade good is, uh, the description of it, the use of it and where you get it. And so you might you know, have these things in your caravan. Um, maybe that's exactly what you're doing. You're going to a particular location and then coming back. Yeah, it could be an entire uh, mission. Maybe instead of having like a mission to get to the Black City, maybe you're trying to, um, you know, you're playing a merchant campaign and your goal is to take your caravan to some particular location, get some particular trade good and then get back or, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> um, descriptions of the kinds of caravans you can have again. Um, financiers, so who, who's actually your patron and as their patron. Who are they? What do they want? Their organization, their opponents, and their weaknesses and oddities. And then who really stands behind the patron, right? So there's the patron, and then there's the guy who's actually in charge. Um, I think that's really cool. Caravan quests. And then the stuff. This is how to play the game. Um, and like, you know, again, vehicles and mounts. Uh, different humanoid creatures, beasts of burden, um, vehicles, as I said, meat wagons, <laughs> grassland general goods, transportation, toolkits, armor, weapons, things you can find throughout the system. This is all that sort of general information. 100 strange items, always a good table to have, and this whole thing is the table. So these entries are much more interesting than, say, the trinket tables in 5e. Although those are actually cool tables, don't get me wrong, I like the trinket tables in 5e. But it's like that. Spells. Which, that's it <laughs> for spells. It's not very long. Then you have the bestiary. Creatures, A to Z. And it just goes through the kinds of creatures you can run into in the ultraviolet grasslands. But, you know, you could bring in any creatures you want from any system and put them in here. Pets. And it would totally, totally work. And then the setting. This is ways to explain it. Uh, other voyagers, but also other gates. Um, again, weather and geography. Uh, new discoveries. Histories. And the histories are tables. Fables and stories, dimly remembered, forgotten times, oral histories of the revolution. Like these are tables. So there's no set history to this world. You find it. Luca Reitz has other products, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, the, uh, oh gosh, I'm not, not, not remembering correctly because I don't remember the name. But the one where you're sort of like an Alpine, there's an Alpine pro province and you're traveling around in it. Um, I forget what it's called, but that has a similar thing where you're rolling on tables to find out the history rather than just having a set history. Or, you know, you can choose, obviously. But he gives you options for what this world was like. And there's a glossary at the very end. Uh, then you get your caravan sheets and cargo sheets and hero of the ultraviolet grassland. Here's your character sheet with then an index at the very end. And then he has these like travel poster po like postcards on the very back as an extra page here with um, an upcoming potential setting or a setting within a setting. It's hard to say what this is, uh, but it's a, got a website and a link. So I think it's a new setting he's developing, but it's technically within the world of ultraviolet grasslands, but not really. Uh, it's an interesting way to do it. And then we get the final back page, which is um, just... Uh, a bunch of random tables that you can use from various tables in the books, NPCs and creatures and things, um, detailed records, all that. There's the back of the book. So Ultraviolet Grasslands, the second edition, is an excellent book. Weird, 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 weird. Don't get me wrong, uh, but 
weird and just like the right way to get those creative juices flowing. Beautiful art. Uh, again, I think it's worth it. But if you're the kind of person that is turned off by this, this is not a must-have. The system itself isn't like an incredibly brilliant, um, mechanically you know revolutionary system. It's straightforward. It's simple. So what you're getting this book for is the setting and the art rather than for the mechanics that are developed because you can find mechanics like this. Although I should say this, that the mechanics for the actual Oregon Trail element, the actual journey element is great. Really well done. All right, guys. Well, that'll do it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'll put a link in the description where you can get this if you're interested. All right. I'll see you guys around.